Mm, good day, Tragic here, and welcome to Wrath of the Righteous. We are ready to do the next quest, which is the Elven Entanglement. Oh yeah. So, there's a lot going on. Now, I've done, I read all the locations and read all the, the lore during the la during the story video which i released before this so if you want to hear about all that kind of law stuff just watch that video uh there is some interesting stuff to talk about with this scenario before we start but the first thing we need to do is import our new decks uh which are, i've saved into here now i've tweaked the decks a tiny bit since the last the actual deck building video very, very minor tweaks. Basically, I moved uh, a couple. I, I didn't actually change any of the cards. I just moved some of them around a little because uh, I thought while I was doing the deck editing and all the different things I was doing, I noticed some things that I think I could have improved. So I did. The starters. Oh, let me just uh, let me just set the game up. So we'll just. Bring out all our characters that we saved. And remember, we are playing with the add-on deck. And we are also playing with the promos. Oop, wrong button. There we are. So if I just fetch these decks, basically they're identical. I mean, there's there's really not a huge amount of differences going on here. The, the main big differences are over here. Basically, I put Mastiff into Sheila's deck. Sheila has a hand size of four. She has got a heal. So... I want to make sure she gets her weapons out. I want to make sure she's ready to go. So being able to discard this card to draw extra cards is going to really help me dig through her deck and find the things that we need, like blessings and weapons. So Mastiff has been moved into her deck. Also, I've moved a number of, of these blessings of Baphomet into Kyara's deck. Now, basically, what's interesting about the Blessings of Baphomet is that it allows you to add two dice to any check during the first exploration, which is pretty damn cool. Because basically, she's kind of weak. Uh, even when she has her weapon, she's still only rolling with a, a D6 plus a D8. So I think that's going to really help her out. The problem is that these have the Corrupted Trait, which isn't too much of a problem. They do have the Divine Trait still, so she can still use them to power her uh, healing. And that's pretty much it. I can't remember. I mean, I might not have put them back exactly the same, but I didn't actually add any new cards. I mean, the, the, these decks were made out of the existing pool, but they're the two major changes. So I'm back. I, I just had to reload the, the mod for a sec because... Uh, I forgot to there were, I, I forgot to uh, finish <laughs> doing the setup basically. Uh, the setup has to delete this setup button at the end of the turn, otherwise it can't discard the cards correctly. And I had that turned off while I was editing, so that's to quickly make it. Anyway, so here is the new mod. Basically, we still have the same demoling because remember we're still doing the first one, which is B. Uh, you'll notice some differences to the mods, like for example, the, the locations are all much larger now, which makes them a lot easier to, to look at. And we've got all these extra buttons here uh, on the side that allows you to draw straight from the, the decks. Plus we have an explore button, so we can draw straight from there. Plus you can now, like you can now right click on the face to zoom in. Click on the face to zoom to the guy. Click on the face to zoom back to the deck. So there's a few more movements, things. And also the advanced blessing deck is now red. Uh, so I can keep track of my blessings a lot easier. So let's have a quick look at what we've got up here. For starters, with the Elven Engagement, there's this very, very interesting text. 
And it says that instead of your first exploration on a turn, you may summon and encounter the henchman Fiendish Tree. If you defeat it, draw the cohort Vinced from the box. So Vince is this guy here. Uh, where's Vince? There he is. He's the Sata who, uh, that we were talking about in the law section. And this has actually got a misprint on it. When you attempt to close a location, return this card to the box to automatically close it. But this is supposed to say to close any box, not just... Let me see if I can find this. Right, so I think it's page five. Here we are. Oh, I'm going to make these buttons smaller somehow. Getting vinced in the Elven Entanglement doesn't help much since the Tangle Trap won't allow me to close my location when I defeat it. Is that how it's supposed to work? No, it's supposed to work quite a bit better than that. On the cohort change, when you attempt to close a location, return this card to the box to automatically close it to when any character defeats a henchman from a location deck, return this card to the box to allow the character to automatically close that location. So I might uh, have to redo the text on this card to make it a bit clearer, but basically the 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 monster in here i think there might still be some more in here let me see if i can find one no we don't have any but basically a whole bunch of these locations will have tangle traps in them okay and tangle traps don't allow you to close the location so we need to get help from vince vince is going to close the location for us and to get him we need to actually kill Fiendish trees, which are very, very annoying, horrible monsters. And basically we want to use fire traits. So we want to keep getting these into our hand as quickly as possible, and then using Vince to grab these guys. Also, uh, since we're playing with the, pro the promos, we're going to use uh, Valus as well. Uh, if the current scenario lists a cohort, treat this cohort as if it was on the list. So it basically adds another cohort to our game. We're going to give the cohort to uh, Aowen here. And this is the cohort that comes with it. This is Celeste the Uprooter. She does a, a combat, helps to combat. So we're going to give her to uh, Kyra who's our weakest combatant. So that's the first thing. We want. We can choose to uh, summon the henchman instead of our first exploration. And it's a very necessary thing. We have to keep doing that because if we don't get Vince into our hands, we're not going to be able to close the locations at all unless we completely deplete the deck and there just will not be time. Uh, also... If you would encounter a card that has the animal trait, you summon and encounter the henchman carnivorous stump instead. So we can't get any animal trait allies. Instead, we have to fight this stump, which is, I guess, uh, what happens to fiendish trees. <laughs> if you play an ally that has an animal trait during this encounter, banish it. If undefeated, each other character or location is dealt one combat. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location this henchman came from. So this is another way to close locations. So we want animal traits. But he's a combat 13. But we've got a cool perception check because, you know, if we recognize it as a horrible mean stump instead of just a lump of wood, we can kind of get around it. So he's a very cool card. Hopefully we'll be getting lots of animal trait allies. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our locations. We have the Dark Forest. So this has only got one barrier and two monsters, and it's pretty much got a lot of other stuff, but it has a really interesting at this location effect, which is when you explore, examine the top two cards, shuffle one into the deck and encounter the other. So this is a good place for me to send Kyra at the beginning because it'll allow me to avoid Banes, basically. And you can succeed at a wisdom or survival check to close. So this is a great one for her because she has fantastic wisdom sitting at a D12 baby. So she's going to go to the dark. 
thing. Okay, we have the Watchtower. You may summon and defeat a random monster instead of the normal check to inquire a boon. It's very, very cool. And it has a uh, banish a weapon to complete. Again, the guy with the most weapons. This guy draws five cards and he has five weapons. So this is a great place to put Crow. This place also has two monsters only. So it's not got the most amount of monsters. It does have two allies which is good because we might be able to get the stump. Okay, the cemetery. All non-villain monsters gain the undead trait and are immune to mental and poison traits. So this isn't great. This is basically adds the undead trait to everything because it's all coming from the graveyard. But the thing is, we don't really have much that key off undead. In, I think it was Rise of the Rune Lords, Kiara had an automatic bonus to fighting undead, but not in this particular game. So there's three monsters in here and there's some weapons and stuff. I'm going to send Sheila there because uh, I think it's cool for the paladin to go and go into those locations. See how now, now, now the locations are a lot bigger. I can, it's very easy for me. I don't know if you remember, but it was very hard to pop up these cards when the characters were sitting on them because they're basically like, you know, you have to, I don't know, whatever. The point is they're bigger now, the locations in the mod. Okay, so we've got the guard post. This is uh, in the law section. They talked about the town just beyond here. You can see it in the background of that image up around the back. Uh, at the start of your turn, summon and encounter the henchman corrupted soldier. So this is another henchman that we'll have to deal with constantly. Uh, and he's not too complicated, basically. Uh, So put him in the little spot. So the difficulty of checks to defeat the corrupted soldier is increased by twice the scenario's deck number. Okay. Remember we're at uh, scenario B, so that's nothing. So he's basically a nine combat, not six charisma. He's very easy to kill. We're not too worried about this guy. He does do a permanent three damage. Because he does special combat damage. Combat damage is equal to two plus the scenario's adventure deck number. Okay. So that in this case, it would be two damage. Beg your pardon. And see where it says, if defeated, you may immediately attempt to close the location. Well, summoned henchmen don't have that text enabled. It's like another one of the little quirks with this game. Uh, you have to draw them naturally to be able to close location. So he can't, we can't use this guy to close the location. So what I want is someone who has got a high combat to you can basically steamroll this guy at any point. Uh, we have, I want, are you supposed to draw your hands before you select your locations? I don't know. Basically, Crow is a good person to go to the watchtower because guard post, because he's pretty much guaranteed to be able to ruffle stomp this guy. Uh, let's stick him there, actually. Okay. So, Anduin. What are we going to do with Anduin? Let's get all these guys up here and make it a bit easier. Okay, so we have, we also have the Molten Pool. This is a, this is sort of like the Abyssal one from the last Thing. You don't really want to go here. Any character at this location would be dealt combat damage. That character is dealt fire damage instead. At the start of your turn, you're dealt one fire damage. It's, it's vicious. Okay, and there's three barriers in here as well. And you know how bad the barriers are in this game. So this is a really horrible place. So we have to probably go at some point. But we really don't want to. So what's annoying about this is that Combat damage is dealt as fire damage and we retain fire damage. Now, the way damage works, we, we've seen how damage works when we attack people, like electrical immunity, poison immunity. We can't use spells that have those traits attacking things. But when you're defending, right, unless the card states that it's capable of doing all damage or if it's capable of doing, you know, specific damage, it only does combat damage. 
And what that means is that things like helmets and stuff, that's not going to help us versus this type of damage. So this is a very, very harsh location. It's uh, incredibly difficult. Uh, I'm very upset about it, to be honest. And uh, yeah, you got to... Yeah, it's just a really nasty location. So <laughs> what I would love is a way to stack this deck. If I can figure out a way to find... Uh, you know, there's ways that you can peek at decks. If I can peek at this deck somehow, find out where the henchman is in the Motum pool and then use Vince to close it really quickly, that would be the perfect solution. Okay, so we've also got the Wounded Lands. This is a pretty easy one. When you encounter a Bane, you may not play allies on your checks. Doesn't really worry me too much. And you exceed at a Wisdom or a Survival 8. So that's also another good place for Kara, but I think we're going to place Anduin there. We have the Abyssal River. When you are dealt combat damage, you are dealt poison damage instead. Very, very nasty. This place is a Monsters 3 and has two barriers, and you have to discard a card with a Divine Trait. So we're going to lay off there for now. Caravan. This is another three monster location. If you move or are moved from this location, move to a random location. We succeed at a strength check with a difficulty of 5 plus the scenario's adventure deck number. So I need a 5 strength test to close the caravan. So basically, where's... Uh, oh, Alan. Here's Alan down here. I'm going to put Alan there. And that's a ba that's banish a weapon. I guess she has to go to the Abyssal River. She doesn't have Divine... What, is, what, what? How do I close this? Discard a card with the Divine Trait. Okay, that's not too hard. Basically, all the, the blessings are Divine Traits. Okay, so let's draw our starting hands. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this guy is completely crushing skulls already. He's got so much gaff. Excellent. She's got a weapons as well. And some blessings. He has a weapon. Excellent. Okay, she's got a little bit of gas, not too much. And she's got gas, excellent. And even she's got weapons. Okay, so this is a very good opening hand. She's got the sword breaker, which allows her to evade. Now, there was some talk in the forum, uh, in the, the comments about how she does not have the weapons skill. Now, the weapon skill is a little bit weird in this game. Basically, most weapons don't, doesn't matter about your skill. Okay. So for this one says, for a combat check, reveal this card to use your strength and melee plus eight. You may additionally discard this card to allow, allow another D6. So all of that does not require the weapon skill. Okay. Only this last thing. If not proficient with weapons, the difficulty of this check is increased by four. So that is the bit that annoys us. So for example, this card here does not have any requirements for weapons use. Okay, but that mace, I gave her a mace. Has anyone actually drawn the mace? Yeah. So this is the mace I gave her. This does not have any weapon requirement. It's just you get a D8 and you can discard for a D4. Doesn't have any requirement for, you know, knowing weapon skills. I think that's about it. We are ready to rumble and uh, let's get into this. Now, I've been told multiple times by multiple people that this scenario is practically impossible. Uh, it made a lot of people rage quit. This entire scenario is this particular one. So the chances of us winning is going to be low. I think we... Uh, my my solution to winning is just going to be fiendish tree as much as possible. Okay, we've all got. Uh, no one has actually drawn a fire 
spell. So we have to wait a couple of turns, but uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty difficult. Now, this entire set is supposed to be really, really hard to play. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to play this game as I always do. If I fail, I will then play the games privately and then just upload a winning recording. So they'll be at most one fail, then a win for each location, for each uh, scenario. And that's that. Let's, uh, let's get into this. I will see you guys next time.